integration a mathematical function widely used in physics represented by a simple equation this is the sign of integration integration fx dx where fx is any function of x for any object when we consider one particle one small element of the object then to apply the same to the overall system we will use integration whenever we have a system that is complicated and has a large number of particles then we first disintegrate the system apply the given conditions or derive an expression for one particular element of the system and then we again integrate the system so first disintegrate then integrate the system that was a simple example integration is also used when there are other variables variable over time over distance and other variable quantities keep in mind that integration does not mean summation summation is used when you have discrete data while integration is used when you have continuous data integration is also called anti derivative we have already seen what is derivative so let us see what anti derivative means first of all we know that d dx of x raised to n is n x raised to n minus 1 let us reverse that equation in the form of a question what is n x raised to n minus 1 derivative of now definitely your answer is going to be x raised to n what about x raised to n plus 1 since 1 is a constant its differentiation will be zero so again differentiation of x raised to n plus 1 will be n x raised to n minus 1 so will be the differentiation of x raised to n plus pi so in general i can say that differentiation of x raised to n plus c any constant let it be pi 1 or infinity that will be equal to n x raised to n minus 1 so in general mathematically i can say that anti derivative of n x raised to n minus 1 will be equals to x raised to n plus c or i can represent it as integration sign n x raised to n minus 1 dx will be equals to x raised to n plus c let us have a look at some general formulas first one integration of 0 dx equals to c it means that anti derivative of 0 will be equal to any constant then integration of 1 dx equals to x plus c that means anti derivative of dx you don't need to say one every time will be equals to x plus any constant a constant will always be added because when you had differentiated it some constant might have converted to zero so we always add the constant then integration of x raised to n dx will be x raised to n plus 1 upon n plus 1 plus c again then e raised to x dx anti derivative of that will be e raised to x plus c c differentiation of e raised to x was e raised to x so anti derivative will also be e raised to x only but here the only change will be the addition of constant then integration of cos x dx will be sin x plus c sin x dx will be minus cos x integration of 1 by x will be natural log of x plus c 
integration of n raised to x dx will be n raised to x upon log n plus c. Memorize these general formulas and use them to practice these questions. At this point, I would like you to pause the video, copy down the questions and try to solve them by yourself. Keep in mind that just like differentiation, integration is directly applied irrespective of the plus and minus sign. Hoping that you have tried to solve these questions by yourself, let us see the solution. First one, integration of x square plus 4 dx that will be equals to integration of x square dx plus integration of 4 dx. Integration of x square dx is integration of x raised to n. So that will be x raised to n plus 1, 2 plus 1, 3 upon n plus 1. Again 2 plus 1, 3. Plus 4 is a constant so it will remain as it is. Integration of dx is x and also we add the constant c. Similarly second one integration of 5x square plus 8x minus 5 will be equal to 5 constant comes out of integration integration of x square dx plus 8 integration of x dx minus 5 integration of dx. Applying integration we get 5 as, at, as it is integration of x square dx x cube upon 3 integration of x dx x square upon 2 8 as it is minus 5 as it is integration of dx is x plus constant c simplifying the expression again we get 5x cube upon 3 plus cancellation gives 4x square minus 5x plus c as it is next one integration of x raised to 3 by 2 plus 2x dx so that will be integration of x raised to 3 by 2 dx plus 2 integration of x dx applying integration rules we get see 3 by 2 is also considered as n so we will get again x raised to n plus 1 upon n plus 1 3 by 2 plus 1 upon 3 by 2 plus 1 2 as it is integration of x dx is x square upon 2 plus constant so that will be x raised to 5 by 2 the whole upon 5 by 2 plus 2 gets cancelled x square plus c you can simplify this and you can write it as 2 by 5 x raised to 5 by 2 then integration of 1 plus 3t into t square with respect to dt. Now when you have something in multiplication first try to simplify that expression. So that will be integration of t square plus 3t cube. You multiply t square. So here it will be t square plus 3 into t cube into dt. Now you can apply the integration law and simplify it. So it will be integration of t square dt plus 3 integration of t cube dt that will be t square integration is t cube upon 3 plus 3 t cube integration is t raised to 4 upon 4 plus constant. The final one integration of 4 e raised to x dx will be simply 4 e raised to x plus c. Now to find the value of the integral constant c we use boundary conditions. So when using indefinite integral you will need to apply boundary conditions to a system to find the value of integral constant. For example, you have the question solve y equals to integration x square dx if at x equals to 0 y equals to 2. This is your boundary condition that if x equals to 0 then y will be equals to 2. So, First we solve y equals to integration x square dx that will be y equals to x cube upon 3 plus integral constant c. Then 
at x equals to 0 you have y equals to 2 so apply these values x equals to 0 this entire term is 0 y equals to 2 so here 2 will be equals to c that is nothing but value of integral constant c equals to 2 so you have the overall solution along with the boundary conditions y equals to x cube upon 3 plus 2 now take up your textbooks of mathematics and practice as many as questions that you can so that when you have to apply these concepts to physics it will be easier for you.